Hello and welcome to Reboot Theater. I'm your host, The Invisible Man. Today we're going to talk about Jumanji. Ever since I was a kid, I have loved Jumanji. This is the board game movie for me. Yeah, Clue has its moments, but Jumanji is definitely my favorite. This film features likable characters, great performances by the cast, and a captivating story that still holds up. It's one of Robin Williams' finest works, and it's one he'll always be remembered for. So naturally, Hollywood had to fork it all up with a modernized adaptation! Idiots. So this is Jumanji, welcome to the jungle. So how do you ruin a great film? I know, let's use bland trope characters we've seen a billion times before, a cast of huge names that go together like oil and water, and the whole premise of the game will be flipped on its head. That should make it unrecognizable. Honestly, this movie is another unnecessary reboot in an already vast landscape of cheap knockoffs. How did it go so wrong? Let's take a look at Welcome to the Jungle. The film begins right where the original left off, with the game washing up on a beach and a new player finding it. A kid named Alex gets the game as a present, but decides he's not interested in playing it. Board game? Who plays board games? In 1996, everybody. So he plays a video game instead, and Jumanji sits on the shelf and collects dust, never to be played again. Welcome to the jungle! And that was the very short film, Welcome to the Jungle. No, no, I'm kidding. Even though it really should end there. To entice the kid to play, Jumanji transforms itself into a video game. And you lost me. Here's the very first problem with this movie. Pandering. It's no secret the original film was big with 90s kids. So in an effort to make it more hip, they updated the game and made it into a video game. Wrong. You think we're not wise to that by now? You think all you have to do is make something high tech for us to like it. It's not! Here's what you don't understand, Hollywood. Growing up in an age where advertisements are everywhere, millennials are very good at detecting BS. We're used to people trying to sell us cheap gimmicks, and we see right through it. And nothing screams gimmick more than taking a nostalgic property and making it digital so it will appear more to us. Shame on you. So the kid pops in the game cartridge. <laughs> Seriously, this is happening? And he gets sucked into the game and nobody knows he's there. We then jump to the present day, where we meet four kids in detention. They have names, but I'll just call them what they really are. Nerd trope, jock trope, shy girl trope, and popular girl trope. Most of them are pretty bland, except for one. Ugh. Seriously, no reception? Okay, can today get any worse? She's legitimately insulting. I mean, wow. They actually went out of their way with this one, didn't they? You actually went out of your way to make her as annoying as you possibly could. Here's the thing, guys. If you want millennials to like your movie, maybe don't portray them as technology-obsessed plastic party girls. It seems like that would, I don't know, alienate your target audience? What marketing idiots thought this was a good idea? There are stupid marketers, and there are enlightened stupid marketers. The reality is that we're too incompetent or lazy to create something of value. So they remove staples from magazines as part of their punishment, except Plastic Girl, who's too pretty to care. Are you gonna help, or are you too pretty? I'm too pretty. And then one of them discovers the game on one of the shelves. I could speculate how it got there, but who cares. So they plug the game in and prepare to play, but it sucks them inside too. Once there, the nerd becomes Dwayne Johnson, the jock becomes Kevin Hart, the shy girl becomes Karen Gillan, and the popular girl becomes Jack Black. <laughs> Alright, that's a little funny. Or it would be if she didn't admire her penis every five minutes. Oh my god, you guys, there's like literally a penis attached to my body right now. Martha, come look at my penis! No thanks! Wow, wow! Oh, this is so much easier! It's cool, right? Yeah, because you have, a, like, a handle. You're a party girl! You expect me to believe you've never seen a penis before? Get real. So they realize they each have three lives in the game, and every time they die, they fall from the sky. Even though the fall alone should kill them, but whatever. As they figure out what to do next, Jack Black gets eaten by a hippo. Even though hippos are vegetarians. Do we just forget that huge detail? They come across an AI in the game who tells them that evil bad man has cursed jungle land by stealing precious jewel, blah blah blah, you know what to do with this. And yes, the bad guy in this is Van Pelt. Van Pelt? Van Pelt! 
How far off the mark can you get? This is supposed to be the same game. Why does Van Pelt look so different this time around? If you wish to leave the game, you must save Jumanji and call out its name. I think... I think we have to save Jumanji. Yes, Einstein. Thank you for telling us the exact same thing we just heard. Three times! Hey guys, guess what? The name of the game is Jumanji. <laughs> Shocking, right? Seriously, why would you say the same thing three times? And remember, if you wish to leave the game, you must save Jumanji and call out its name! They also discover they each have their own strengths and weaknesses. Gillen is a battle dancer, weak against Venom. Black is a cartographer with weak endurance. Hart is a zoologist, weak against Cake, even though that should really be his weakness. And Johnson is a muscular action hero with no weakness. Huh! That sure was nice of the game to give everyone else something bad, but make Dwayne Johnson a demigod! I mean, you know, more than he already is. What can I say except you're welcome? So they embark on an adventure to return the legend to the Hidden Temple. But then a gang of bikers show up and they evade them in an honestly pretty cool fight scene. Watch this. But if that was too exciting for you, don't worry. After about three minutes of coolness, they slow it down to a crawl and have the characters give a ton of exposition. And it's not even necessary. They state things we could have easily figured out on our own. We each have three lives, guys. These little tattoos on our arms, it's, it's our life count. Bethany got eaten by a hippo, so now she only has two lives. He's right. What happens if we use up all our lives? Yes? Well, usually that would mean Say something! Game over. Duh! What else would lives be for? Did we really need to spend a full two minutes explaining this? Here's another problem with this movie. I'm sorry this is kind of becoming a rant now, but... Urgh. This movie talks down to the audience as if they've never heard of a video game in their lives. They explain everything, and I mean everything, in layman's terms. I think he's an NPC, a, a non-player character. He's part of the game. So anything we ask him, he only has his program series of responses. I think it's a cutscene. A lot of games have them. It's like a little movie to tell you the backstory. Yes, thank you for wasting time explaining the obvious. If you wanted to aim this towards old grandmas who'd never played a game in their lives, then sure, that might be necessary. But you're aiming this at kids, remember? The ones who grew up with the original? I guarantee you, every one of them already knows all this! Quit wasting time and get to the action! It looks like there's a village on the other side of this mountain. Yeah, we just jumped in a river, yet somehow we're not even wet. Look, even the map is bone dry. By the way, have you noticed how this video game world has almost nothing a video game would have? Where's the health bar? Where's the point counter? Where are the power-ups? This doesn't feel like a video game world because it looks just like the real world. When I think of a video game world, I think of the light cycles from Tron. I think of the mid-air graphics from Scott Pilgrim. But where is any of that here? Aside from the one scene with their stats and the sound when they fall from the sky, there's nothing that tells you this world is a game. You have a computer world where anything is possible. Basically, you're in the Matrix. So let's do something with that! Why not show pixelated villains appear? Or show a health bar when the heroes take damage? Instead, it's just a generic Indiana Jones knockoff with nothing that sets it apart from the real world. So they head to the bazaar to try to find the missing piece of the map. But not before a good eight minutes of useless filler! And I mean useless! You could cut it out of the movie altogether and nothing would be lost. I gotta take a leak first. I've been dreading this all day, but so do I. Can I come with you and you show me how it's done? I may need your help. Uh, uh yeah, sure. sure. <sighs> I'll help you out. So, how do we do this? Uh, easy. You just, uh, you unzip, take it out, fire away. Remember to aim. Well, as genius as this writing is, I'm gonna skip ahead. So they finally get to the bazaar, and they meet a guy selling rations. Woolworth? That's my famous pound cake. Cake? Bethany, you said this was bread. I guess it's been so long I forgot what it tastes like. Oh boy. So now what? He gets sick, or goes into diabetic shock, or... <laughs> Spontaneous combustion! Makes sense to me! Jesus, what was in that cake? Lighter fluid? And by the way, 
Do you think it's a good idea to joke about a person of color exploding in a Middle Eastern bazaar? Just given the state of the world, do you think that's an appropriate joke? Just no, guys, no. Get you better rest. shut your ass up. That's what the whole movie should do at this point. Next, they confront a snake to try to get the missing piece of the map. But instead, they find an elephant and a note. When you see me, begin the climb. But Van Pelt shows up. Mm, mm, sorry, no, no, not calling him that. Emo Spider-Man shows up and demands the jewel. So Johnson defeats the goons with his Maui powers. Hey, it's okay, it's okay, you're welcome. I'm just an ordinary demi-guy. Then a mysterious stranger shows up and escorts the heroes off to his secret hiding place. It's revealed that this is Alex, the same kid who got sucked into the game in 1996. He's played by... That's it, I'm done. Welcome to the jungle. We got oh, all right, I'll finish it. But I won't like it. He's played by Nick Jonas. Weird casting choice. And he's been living in the same hut Alan Parrish built years ago when he was sucked into the game. All right, all right. You get a point for actually trying to tie this in with the original film. What's up with all these candles? Uh, citronella. One of my weaknesses is mosquitoes. And I'm done. Welcome to the jungle! He's living in the jungle, and one bite from a mosquito can kill him? You just lost that point you just earned! Mm. No way in hell I'm buying that! He'd be dead in three days! So they realize the missing piece isn't a piece of the map, but rather Alex is the missing piece. They go with him to steal a plane so he can pilot them to the statue where they must return the jewel. While the boys sneak in the back, Gillen distracts the guards with... Ah, the funniest thing in the entire film. You are the badass. Do you guys like to dance? This has been Karen Gillen, like a sexy fine boss. They steal a chopper and fly to their destination, but along the way they drop the jewel, and it's surrounded by albino rhinos. They're huge, white, scary, and stupid, and they eat people. So to get the jewel back, Johnson comes up with an idea to distract the rhinos. I'm sorry, buddy. Sorry for what? <laughs> wow, that was a world-class douche move. You know what? That suicide bomber joke wasn't offensive enough. Now let's have a herd of angry white males with pointy tops chase down and murder a black guy. Oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit. You really don't know when to quit, do you? After Hart becomes a human sacrifice, they get the jewel back and evade the rhinos. Guys, I've been trying to get across this canyon for like 20 years, okay? Do you realize how huge this is? Oh, <laughs> Seriously? We made it all that way just so you could get bitten and die? So Black gives Jonas mouth to mouth and gives up one of his own lives for the kid. I just don't care anymore. So they all survive and the party trudges on with their mission. They reach a long pathway that leads to the statue, but Johnson thinks it's a trap, so he decides to climb through the trees. That was entirely pointless. So they follow the path to the statue, but emo Spider-Man comes back and causes trouble. Then Hart rides an elephant, Gillen beats up more goons, and Johnson reaches the top of the statue with the jewel. Yeah! Oh well, I guess they're stuck there forever. The end! Welcome to the no, actually they need to call out Jumanji's name in order to win the game. So the world is fixed, the bad guys disappear, and the guide from the beginning returns to escort the heroes out of the game. Wait, what if we didn't go back? I like being like this. Then let's be like this every day. Are we really trying to shoehorn a moral lesson here? You're in a movie where people explode from cake! How do you expect me to take any of this seriously? So they go back to where they started the game and discover Alex was put back where he started too, all the way back in 1996. They all set out to live better lives than they did before, now a little bit wiser from the events of the game. But it's not over yet, as they all hear the drum beats pounding, calling them back to play again. Will somebody else get trapped inside? I guess not. 
So yeah, they destroy the game, thus eliminating any chance of a sequel. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much! And that was Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle. I'll give them credit, they do play Welcome to the Jungle. But Guns N' Roses music aside, I think this movie was sloppily thrown together. The cast doesn't have any chemistry, the game world doesn't look like a game, they ask for a bit too much suspension of disbelief, come on. Mosquitoes in the Jungle? Dead! And it presents every cheap joke you'd expect from a screwball comedy. You know why the first film was better? The film actually knew how to build up suspense, and how to keep you on the edge of your seat. First they would show a clue about what was about to appear. Then they would show just a little bit of what was to come. And then, all of a sudden, something terrible jumps out! That thing still gives me nightmares. In addition, a large amount of the humor in that movie came from the things in the game wreaking havoc across town. But this time the kids go into the game, so that aspect is lost. And there's no buildup or suspense. You can see the danger coming from a mile away! It's so much less intense. Still, I am glad they tried something new here. The inside of the game world is something we haven't seen before. And it is very interesting to see it. But it just falls flat when it doesn't feel anything like a game! There's nothing that looks like a computerized world here! Do something with the Matrix! In the jungle, this movie can wait. Throw out the dice. It's not that great. I'm the Invisible Man, and when there's a crappy sequel, I got it covered.